Just to give a quick recap, Paul Wilson claims to have picked up signals from Apollos 10, 12, 14 and 15 when they were in lunar orbit, plus a few hours of signals during Apollo 15's return voyage. He also claims to have picked up Apollo 16 just before it entered lunar orbit and while it was in lunar orbit. Richard Nadel claims he picked up Apollo 15 in lunar orbit and some of the signals broadcast on the ride home. Seven Gran claims he picked up Apollo 17 during its various passes over his head, then for reasons unknown stopped tracking the signals and resumed only when the craft was in lunar orbit. Further, it wasn't until Apollo 15 that Wilson actually received voice signals and the FCC declared it illegal for hams to inform the world of any communications not intended for public view. In a nutshell, the average ham is typically not allocated the frequency band used by Apollo. And it seems that none of the hams who found a way to tune their dishes to Apollo's signal can attest to having tracked these vehicles all the way to the moon and back. Given that these guys tracked very little data, if any, it's possible that these signals they received were from unmanned probes respectively on the moon and in lunar orbit, which either broadcasted pre-recorded signals or relayed transmissions that were beamed to them from Earth orbit. And given that no one was tracking these probes all the way to the moon, who would know if they were already up there in advance? And let's not forget, with the FCC policing what hams can and cannot disclose to the public, the truth behind Apollo is as good as buried. Just how many hams do you suppose have evidence of a hoax and are keeping silent over fear of prosecution? Before we wrap this one up, there is one final oddity to consider. As we already established, not only did none of the Russian radio telescopes use the 2 GHz used by Apollo, the Russians heavily relied on Jodrell Bank to track their own spacecrafts. The Soviets had mustered all their technical know-how to build the probe, but to score the propaganda coup of reaching the moon first, there was one thing they lacked. They had no means of tracking Lunik all the way, no way to prove they'd really got there. Надо было найти способ, как заставить все человеческое общество поверить в то, что мы действительно попали на Луну. И вот тогда вдруг сообразили, что есть в Англии обсерватория в Джорджев Бэнк. У него были хорошие остронаправленные антенны, пожалуй, лучшие в мир. Yet, Alexei Leonov. The man Russia would have you believe was the first man to walk in space claims to have tracked Apollo 11 during descent and during the moonwalk. All from the comfort of Moscow. In 2004, Leonov wrote a book with David Scott of Gemini 8 and Apollos 9 and 15. The book was titled Two Sides of the Moon. On page 247, Leonov states Everything was set up at the Army Engineering Research Center, known as the Space Transmission School on Kosmolsky Avenue on the morning of the 21st of July 1969. The facility was fully equipped with the latest intelligence gathering and surveillance equipment. During the early hours of that morning, all television monitors and radio receivers were tuned in to what was happening a quarter of a million miles away from our own planet. There were a few cosmonauts present, maybe 10 of us from the first group, and many senior military officers, together with intelligence experts specializing in the lunar program. The room was packed. We were all transfixed by the crackling transmissions from Apollo 11 Commander Neil Armstrong as he guided his lunar landing module Eagle down towards the surface of the moon. Then, on page 248, as I watched the grainy black and white images of Neil Armstrong taking his first tentative steps down the ladder of the lunar lander, it was the most amazing feeling. 
On the 21st of July 1969, everyone forgot for a few moments that we were all citizens of different countries on earth. That moment really united the human race. Even in the military center where I stood, the military men were observing the achievements of our rival superpower. There was loud applause. Again, Leonov wants us to believe that scientists in Moscow picked up signals from the lunar module as it descended to the moon and the television transmissions that followed. This reception would have been an amazing feat if true, because at the time of the lunar landing, Moscow was on the far side of the Earth, the side facing away from the moon. As you can see from this map, Moscow is located on the western edge of Russia, near Eastern Europe. Here is a diagram. It shows the Earth as seen from the Moon at 2018 Greenwich Mean Time, Sunday July 20th 1969, the moment Eagle landed at Tranquility Base. As you can see, or rather can't see, Moscow is on the side facing away from the Moon and is therefore not visible from the Moon. If we zoom in, we can just make out Italy clearly on the edge of the Earth's circumference further indicating that Moscow is not in line of sight with the Moon. Remember, to track a signal from space, the transmitter and transceiver must both be in line of sight. Just as radio telescopes can't track spacecrafts when their orbits take them behind the Moon, these telescopes also can't pick up these transmissions when Earth rotates the tracking stations out of view. So how is it possible that Leonov and his team could have tracked Apollo 11 from Moscow? We can also prove that Moscow would still be out of sight when it was time for the one small step. This diagram shows the Earth as seen from the Moon at the beginning of the Apollo 11 moonwalk. As you can clearly see, mostly the Pacific Ocean is facing the Moon at this time. And the only tracking stations in line of sight are Goldstone, Honeysuckle Creek and Parks, all of which are part of NASA's Deep Space Network. Again. Moscow is quite clearly not visible, and therefore, quite literally, is in no position to receive signals from the Moon. The only way Moscow could have received these signals is if there were a geostationary satellite orbiting Earth to relay them to Mother Russia. But in that case, they wouldn't be able to prove that these signals came from the Moon, because they would only be able to track the transmissions from geostationary orbit, not cislunar space. Most important of all, why would a Russian cosmonaut attempt to cover for the United States when the US were their arch enemy? The same arch enemy who since 1963 has been supplying them with tons of American wheat and to this day are now working together on joint space missions. ASTP, MIR, and the ISS, just to name a few. Alexei Leonov, I speak directly to you here. Here is a diagram. It shows the Earth as seen from the Moon at the moment the Eagle touched down. Here is another diagram. It shows the Earth as seen from the Moon when Armstrong took his small step. Here is a pen. Now, you show me where Moscow can be seen on these two maps.